Well, um, this is uh, the narration of uh, the PowerPoints for section 26.6 and 26.7. In 26.6, we're gonna we continue with uh, capacitors and we're gonna look at the the energy that is stored. In other words, how much energy is needed to charge a capacitor up. And remember what we what we have uh, in uh, for a capacitor is basically two parallel plates separated by uh, distance d uh, with area a. All of them, or both of them, are charged to plus and minus q. And the battery, which is drawn here as an escalator, according to the author of the book, is a device that will be pumping up uh, charges and will charge. Uh, one of the plates with positive charges and the other one with negative charges. This process will continue for as long as the the voltage here is less than the voltage in the battery. At some point the voltage here is going to be equal to the voltage of the battery and the battery doesn't have enough uh, strength to keep on uh, charging the capacitor so it will reach up to some value of, of the charge and it will stop. So at that point, the problem becomes one of electrostatics. The charging up is going to be studied in a section in a different chapter, probably in the next uh, chapter 27. But for now, we're going to look at uh, the amount of energy needed as these, this process takes place. In other words, as the charges from one plate, say the positive charges from the lower play, plate, are being pumped by the escalator, by the battery, to the uh, plate on the positive uh, on the positive plate, the top plate. So of course, that initially, if the, these two charges are neutral, then there is no field in between. So moving one charge from one side to the uh, one plate to the other plate doesn't uh, uh, go against any field. So it will be almost no work. And I say almost because as soon as you remove something from here, this is going to be charged. And there's going to be a little bit of work. But anyway, as we keep on charging the plates, there's going to be a, a stronger force, a stronger field between the two plates. And it's going to be more and more difficult to keep on pumping them. And you need more and more energy. Well, it turns out that um, the energy can be calculated just by looking at the amount of charge that uh, is being moved. And so we, we can um, integrate as the charge goes from an uh, initial value of zero up to a maximum va value of capital Q. And um, this comes straight from the definition of uh, U in terms of the potential and in the potential in terms of the capacitance and the charge. So integrating this, we get Q squared divided by 2C. And this is one way of calculating the amount of energy stored when the charge on the plates equals Q, capital Q. So it's going to be Q squared divided by twice the capacitance that's going to give you the um, energy stored or the, ener the work needed to charge it up to that value of Q. Well, and for a small amount of charge, this is how we arrive to this expression. We have the charge needed to transfer a small dq from between the plates is going to be given by this. This is straight from the definition of voltage. Voltage is the char the energy per unit charge. And now since voltage equals capacitance, charge divided by capacitance, or from the definition of capacitance, then we can write it like this, which we bring it here and uh, integrate, and we get this. Now because the capacitance equals the charge divided by voltage, this can be written in different ways. And I have uh, three ways here. So this is the same as this, but it can be written also like this and like that. All that comes from the definition of capacitance. So we get to choose whenever we want to calculate the energy or work done in charging a capacitor, we get to choose which of the three expressions we're going to use depending on the information that we have. And one um, advantage of capacitors is that, well, it takes some time to be charged. 
but it takes almost no time to discharge. So the capacitors can release the, um, the, the charge very quickly. And this is what is, uh, this property is what is uh, used for uh, the case of uh, the defibrillators or the defib, as they call it in the medical field. And basically this is a charge capacitor and the conductor, which is the body, is the one that receives the charge. So when they say go, there's a discharge on the body and it's supposed to make the heart go back to uh, pumping regularly instead of uh, irregularly and uh, uh, giving uh, the heart the, the rhythm needed to restore the heartbeat. Well, in this case, uh, you have um, a question, and of course you're not going to answer it with your uh, remote uh, eye clicker device, with your phone, but uh, what I want you to do at this point is um, pause this video, uh, think and answer. Okay, I suppose that you did that and you answered and now I'm going to show you the the answer. Well, it comes from uh, you're supposed to calculate the amount of uh, energy and we have uh, three possibilities to choose from and we know that the energy in this case is proportional to delta V to the second power so by just by going from 1.3 to 3 volts we're doubling it which squaring it means 4 so it multiplies times 4 the 2 millijoules gives you giving you 8 millijoules this is an example how much energy is stored in a 220 microfarad camera flash capacitor that has been charged to 330 volts. And that's the first question. The second question is what is the average power dissipation if this capacitor is discharged in one millisecond? Well, the first one uh, they are giving us the capacitance and the voltage, and we are uh, to calculate the energy. Again, there are uh, three ways to calculate the energy. So we get to choose one in which the variables known are the capacitance and the voltage. So this one we cannot use because we don't have the charge, but here we know the capacitance and the voltage. So we can use this one to solve for U, to get U, the energy. So here it is. The energy is one half C delta V squared, the C is going to be 220 times 10 to the negative 6. This is your microfarads. And the voltage is going to be 330 volts to the second power. You multiply all that and you get 12 joules. The second question is uh, the average power dissipation. And they tell us that the capacitor is discharged in one millisecond. Uh, power is uh, energy released by, uh, per unit time. So all we have to do is divide the energy by the time and the energy is going to be 12 joules divided by 1 millisecond which is 1 times 10 to the negative 3 gives you 12,000 watts quite a big number furthermore we can um, calculate not the energy but the energy per volume, when we're talking about parallel plates, we have the two plates and there is a volume inside in which there is an, an electric field. So we can calculate the energy per unit volume in terms of the electric field. So we have the capacitor with a given plate, with a, a plate of an area A separated to the, from the other plate by a distance D. And inside we have um, Air, is where, uh, in the next section we're going to see that we can have um, a dielectric material, but for now we have some volume and that's where the electric field is, will exist. And um, the energy density is going to be the energy divided by the volume, which is this, and the volume is going to be the area times this distance. So it's going to be the volume. So it's just a matter of bringing the expression for the energy Dividing, dividing it by this, and we're going to see that it can be casted in terms of the electric field, 
which is what we want. The energy can be expressed in, in particular in this case, we're using this expression in terms of the capacitance and the voltage, but the voltage inside, remember the field is constant. So the voltage from one plate to the other plate is gonna be equal to the field times the distance. It's gonna be ED. So we place here ED to the second power. And uh, when we multiply things, the, there's gonna be a D square that kills this other D and we end up with uh, epsilon zero divided by two times AD E squared. But AD happens to be exactly the volume. So by the energy per unit volume is gonna be given explicitly in units in terms of the electric field. So we, we get this. This is the energy density is given by the square of the electric field. Now this is a way of calculating it. Some people say that the energy gets stored in the electric field. Well, that's a, an interesting way of putting it because energy is just an accounting uh, mechanism for the amount of work needed to be charged. So what they are saying is that the amount of work that you need to be charged is proportional, that you need to charge the capacitor is proportional to the square of uh, the, uh, the electric field. And I'm talking about the amount of work per unit volume, of course. And that's the end of section six. These are the, the problems. All of these are problems. And now we're gonna go to section seven to study the electrics. These are the solutions for that. Of course, you have access to the, the PowerPoint, the PDF of this uh, PowerPoint in your Blackboard. Okay, in section seven, we're gonna see dielectrics. Dielectrics are basically something that modifies the, um, the behavior of a capacitor. And consider a capacitor in which that is charged to charge Q and minus Q, um, and it, those charges are, are setting up a field inside the capacitor, and we call this field E0. We know that the, uh, the field is uniform inside the, the, the capacitor. So the voltage between the two plates equals the field times the distance, just as usual. But now imagine that we insert uh, into the parallel plate, we insert a material that can be polarized. Remember what polarizability means? Means that the molecules, when they are under an electric field, will rotate in a line with the field. They cannot translate, they don't move, but they rotate and move the charges in such a way that they get aligned with the field. Something like this. If, uh, if we charge the two plates, like shown here, to the same amount of charge as before, the field will create this uh, alignment here of the, of the molecules of the polarizable medium, which is known as a dielectric, that's the name of it. And with that, we're going to have an extra field inside. So we have E0 produced by the charges uh, on the plates, but these uh, molecules there will create, since they are aligned, they will create an internal field that is opposite to the external field that will reduce the net field that is in this region. So we have that the field with the dielectric is going to be equal to the external field, which is the blue field here, minus the red field, which is the polarizable uh, polarization field. And of course, this is going to be less than this by itself. So what we're doing, what we're, what we have is that by inserting this uh, material there, we're creating a field that is less intense than when we had uh, air or vacuum between the plates. And since uh, this field is uniform, V equals CD again, so we're gonna have V equals CD. And since this field is smaller than this field, then this voltage is smaller than this voltage. In other words, to charge a capacitor to the same amount of charge with a dielectric, 
you require less voltage and which means that you can you have a better uh, capacitor because remember the capacitance equals charge divided by voltage so we, we here we, we here we have the same amount of charge divided by a smaller voltage which makes it a larger capacitor so uh, summarizing the di introducing in introducing the dielectric reduces the electric field and the voltage needed to charge it so the capacitor can be charged to the same amount of charge with a smaller voltage turning it into a better capacitor we have a comparison between these two cases we're going to have in this capacitor with air or uh, empty vacuum in between the plates we're going to have a uh, given charge and the capacitance of this is going to be called uh, capacitor zero the voltage across v0 and the field across e0 if we introduce a capacitor a dielectric so that the charge is the same then we have um, uh, the same amount of charge but a different capacitance which is less than this i mean more than this is larger than see, than the the other capacitor a voltage which is less than this voltage and a field that, that which is smaller than this field so we can uh we know that this capacitance is going to be less than this capacitance so we have this relationship here and then we can take uh, uh, the ratio of the two capacitors, uh, capacitances, and define this ratio as kappa. This kappa will depend only on the type of material that we use. Depending kappa will have um, different values depending on the, it, it is, uh, corresponds to a, a specific material. Every material will have, every dielectric material we have will have a specific value of this kappa which is the number by which the um, the capacitance is increased and this kappa is also can be uh, obtained by taking these other ratios now look at the fact that the dielectric capacitance goes on top but the dielectric voltage goes at the bottom because it gets reduced the same the field but the capacitance increases so if you have, uh, if you know a capacitance and a kappa, you can calculate the capacitance with the dielectric simply by multiplying times the kappa. Of course, you can calculate the capacitance uh, by the usual uh, expression, the epsilon zero divided times the area divided by the distance. So this would be the new way the, of calculating capacitances with a dielectric. Again, the dielectric constant is a property of the material and for air and for vacuum of course these two are the same in kappa equals one and uh, by again by increasing by putting a dielectric between the two plates you get uh, increase the capacitance by this this factor now this means that kappa is always equal or larger to one is one when you have vacuum or air and it is larger than one when you have other materials. And I have two um, images here. One is an actual picture of, this is a cartoon, of how you pr uh, prepare parallel plates that are uh, with a very small distance between the two. You know, the thickness of this material, can, that which in this case is wax paper, and that, that is taken as a dielectric. And you can just roll it and end up with a conductor that has a large, a capacitor that has a very large area in a very compact space. This table tells you the, um, the value of the dielectric constant for different materials. Again, it's one in for air or for vacuum, but uh, for Teflon uh, it's 2.1. So just by putting a uh, Teflon between the two plates, you're increasing the capacitance by more than two times and you can have miter or paper 3.7 etc now one problem is that um, these uh, all of these elements they can sustain a voltage across but if the voltage is too high then there's going to be a spark the charges will jump through the medium and go from one plate to the other plate but um, 
the voltage needed for, they, for that breakdown to take place is uh, varies with from element to element. Like for instance, Teflon. If you have a Teflon separated by one meter of Teflon, two plates separated by one meter of Teflon, then you will you will need 60 million volts for that. Of course, if you have a micron, a micron of Teflon, then all you need is just one volt. It will cancel ten to the six, actually six volts. Um, so this is known as the uh, breakdown uh, voltage or the dielectric strength. And it tells you the voltage needed to have a spark. In other words, if you have a capacitor separated by, by Miler, for instance, you cannot go past some distance, uh, some value of the, of the voltage, because at some value, there's gonna be a spark. And I can give you an example. We have parallel plates that has an area of one meter square and a spacing of half of a millimeter. The K is uh, 4.7, which tells you that we're talking about, uh, what was it, um, Teflon? No, um, uh, don't remember. And the dielectric strength is, uh, is given to us as 18,000 volts per millimeter. So our first question is, what is the capacitance? Well, it's going to be equal to kappa epsilon zero area divided by the distance. So we know that is uh, the usual expression for the capacitance. Now multiply times kappa. And it's going to be kappa 4.9 epsilon zero. The area is given as one meter square. And the distance is uh, half a millimeter. So we have to put it in meters as so half of times 10 to negative 3. All of this gives you 8.67 times 10 to negative 8 farads. So that's the capacitance. And the next question is, uh, what is the maximum voltage that it can sustain? Well, uh, this is telling us that if the separation was where uh, 1 millimeter, it can sustain 18,000 volts before it sparks. But uh, we're not talking about one millimeter, we're talking about half a millimeter, so it's going to be half of this, 9,000 volts. Simply a rule, a proportion will give you the answer. So it's 9,000 volts. Another example, water can be a, a conductor, but it can also be a dielectric. And the problem with water is that uh, it has a, a breakdown voltage that is not that large, so it can um, uh, a spark can easily go from one plate to another plate. But in any case, we have a capacitor parallel plate that has uh, a magnitude five nano farads charged to 160 volts, and then it is disconnected and put inside of the steel water. So it's going to be a new capacitor, but it was disconnected. So this will be kept. It will maintain the, the, the voltage and the charge. Actually, it will maintain the charge. It will not maintain the voltage. And the capacitance is changing. So the, the question is, what? there are two questions. What are the capacitance and voltage of the water field capacitor? Well, first we have to calculate the, the capacitance, uh, which is going to be kappa times the capacitance without uh, the, the insulate, the dielectric. So we, we need the kappa for the steel water, and what we want is this, is going to be the 5 nanofarads times that kappa. So from the table, we see that kappa equals 80. So the new capacitance is going to be 80 times the old capacitance. It gives you 400 nanofarads. Now, when we charge it, 160 is going to give us some amount of charge. But when we change the capacitance, the charge stays, but the voltage decreases. And that's the beauty of, uh, uh, of dielectrics, that they give you a uh, the same amount of charge with a smaller voltage. So uh, 
again from here we know that the ratio of the voltages the inverse ratio of the voltage is going to give you kappa so the new voltage is going to be the old voltage divided by kappa so here here is 160 divided by 80 gives you two volts so you can charge it up to the same amount of charge if you have it in the steel water not using 160 volts but using only two volts so you save a lot of uh, work then there is another question uh, what is the energy stored in the capacitor before and after its immersion these are the numbers that we that we calculated before i mean this is uh, the capacitor that we calculated when the voltage is two with the dielectric this is without the dielectric the capacitance is five nanofarads with 160 volts so we need these numbers to calculate the the energy remember there are three ways of calculating the energy so we're going to use this one here this one half this is what we have we we know the capacitance and the voltage so we have we use this one so before uh, in empty space, we empty air, we have uh, 5 and 160, so it's going to be 5 and 160 to the second power, gives you this amount of energy that is uh, needed to charge the capacitor. But um, in, the, in the case of water, then we're going to need only, uh, you can see this negative 7, so it's going to be 100, almost more than 100 uh, almost a hundred times less, eight times ten to the negative seven joules of work are needed. So a lot of uh, savings. We have another um, example. What is the energy density of a defib? Well, a defib unit contains a hundred and fifty microfarads capacitor that is charged to twenty one hundred volts. The capacitor plates are, are separated by 0 0.05, so it's half of a one-tenth of a millimeter. And um, this is the thickness, this is separation, but it's the, the thickness of the insulator. Uh, and the insulator has a uh, dielectric constant of 120. First question, what is the area of the capacitor plates? Well, we know the separation, we know the capacitance, we can solve for the area. Remember how to calculate capacitance, it's going to be epsilon zero, area divided by D. So we have it right here. And what uh, they are, uh, we are being asked to calculate the area, so we solve for the area, it's going to be D. We get it from here, it's going to be D times the, the uh, capacitance and times, well, this, D times that divided by epsilon zero. So we get uh, the capacitance, D, kappa, epsilon zero. So we know the capacitance is 150. The separation is this. The kappa is, 100, is 120, and this is epsilon zero. So the area happens, uh, turns out to be 7.1 uh, square meters. So this is um, very large, but um, this is very thin, This uh, the dielectric. So it can be rolled in a small bundle. Second part, what are the stored energies and energy density in the electric field when the capacitor is charged? Well, the energy, we have also three ways of calculating it. And for the electric field, we can calculate it. If we know the voltage, we can solve for the electric field. So what we need to do is to uh, first do the um, uh, calculate the energy and we're given the voltage we're giving the capacitance so we can calculate it from the middle expression here uh, 150 times 186 this is the capacitance right here and this one is uh, the voltage that is uh, 2100 volts so we calculate the total energy to be 330 joules. Now, the energy density, for the energy density, we can do it in two different ways. We can calculate, uh, since we know the um, energy and we know the area, we just calculated the area before, and the separation, we can calculate the volume. So we can divide this by the volume. But here, 
we're doing it a different way. We can solve, we're solving for the uh, electric field here, and then we use the electric field to calculate the energy density. So uh, epsilon zero one half uh, e squared. So um, the electric field is going to be the voltage divided by the distance. So we get this number. This comes here to the second power, and we have epsilon zero, and then uh, the the electric constant, the kappa. And so we get the energy density in joules per meter cube is 9.4 times 10 to the fifth. And this is the end of section seven and it is the end of uh, chapter 26. So um, uh, we're gonna, there's gonna be a quiz of course, uh, but not uh, right after we come back from the spring break is going to be one week after that.